Welcome back. Let's turn now to developments in the presidential election in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where the Electoral Commission is delayed announcing results because it says all the votes have not been counted yet. It has been a real battle trying to conduct the election, and former Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Joe Keshi, says the political crisis witnessed in the country can be traced to hundreds of years before its independence from the Belgians, who plundered the country's natural resources and mineral wealth. He says African leaders have never utilized resources their countries have been blessed with because of greed and a lack of political will. It was said in our case, for example, before I return back to the Congo, that when we began the exploitation of oil or we found oil and we needed to write the rules governing oil operation in Nigeria, who did we turn to? We turned to Shell. <laughs> so Shell probably drew up a true or false. If, you, if that kind of thing happened here, you can imagine that worse things happen in a place like uh, the Congo, where there was no capacity, you know, uh, in terms of the locals being able to control their resources, uh, you know, the way they want. But the truth of the matter is that they were not even involved in the mining of these resources. It was all in foreign hands. And by the way, you know, in 1960, Congo was, this, was the second most industrialized country after uh, South Africa, because the Belgians were preparing the Congo as part of Belgium itself. So we must recognize the fact that, um, uh, you know, some of this wealth on the ground in a number of African countries has also been a source of uh, some of the crisis and instability that they have experienced. Here in Nigeria, a world-class disease prevention and control center is underway in Nasara State, northern Nigeria. The center, which is worth over 1 billion naira, is a collaboration between the Nasara State Government and the University of Maryland through the Institute for Human Virology of Nigeria. Early diagnosis enables prompt treatment of victims during viral disease outbreaks. Unfortunately for many years, health personnel in Nasarawa State have had to grapple with the absence of a disease control facility, which will enable them to attend to victims as quickly as desired. With the existence of just few of such centers across the country, they've had to wait for longer days to identify patients who come down with any suspected viral disease. Nasarawa State, which is Lassa fever endemic in the last three years, have recorded over 200 suspected cases, out of which 33 came out positive and eight lives were lost. Medical investigations revealed that the lives were lost as a result of the lag time of sending samples back and forth. A lot of times you lose a lot of patients because of the certainty, the time that it will take between when the patient comes to the hospital, when you suspect he has lazar fever, and you have to wait for the results. Although we are allowed to commence treatment before the results come back, but you always want to know that what exactly are you dealing with. So we have to be taking the samples to far away places that it will take days for us to get. This challenge prompted the construction of a disease prevention and control center of international standard by the Nasarawa State Government in partnership with the University of Maryland through the Institute for Human Biology of Nigeria. Doctors confirm that the center has three components sufficient to cater for all viral cases. It's going to have three components in it, and one is the diagnostic lab, which is um, going to be basically virology, especially all the viral hemorrhagic diseases like Lassa fever, yellow fever, and even Ebola. And um, we'll also have an isolation center where we'll be treating cases that are highly infectious like Lassa fever and other highly infectious diseases, and also have embedded in that same structure an epidemiological unit. For Governor Tanko Almakura, the facility will be beneficial to the entire country. With the support that we are getting from the Center for Disease Control, uh, we will make this center one of its kind that could be a one-stop center that will investigate virtually all kinds of very sensitive uh, outbreaks. The Disease Prevention and Control Center, the government say, will be furnished with the state-of-the-art equipment to become the best in West Africa. 
It will also help greatly in reducing time of viral disease diagnosis from days to hours. In addition, create a platform for research and vaccine formulation. With performances by contemporary African dance greats such as Jermaine Akogni and Salia Sanu, the 12th edition of the Dialogue de Corps Festival recently held in Burkina Faso showed why it's still one of the continent's foremost dance events. This year's festival explored the themes of imaginary territories and migration. The dancers told the stories of thousands of Africans dealing with the issue of migration. <laughs> Jermaine Akogni moves across the stage, performing with power, grace and energy one would expect from a much younger performer. The 74-year-old Senegalese choreographer, known as the mother of African contemporary dance, still captivates her audience. Appearing at the recent 12th edition of the Dialogue des Corps in Burkina Faso's capital, Ouagadougou, she reminds the audience why she is one of the most important figures in contemporary African dance. She says her signature has its root in African dance and drumming traditions, but also incorporates an urban and modern aesthetic. We were among the first ones who wanted to change traditional African dance and take it further. So I went a little further with what my ancestors had done and took African dance to another level. Dance is linked to what's happening and must reflect the times. Dance today continues to evolve. We also have to adapt and reflect the current environment. She also said she has always believed in the cross-cultural exercise of infusing traditional African dance with modern touches, which is important to the continuation of the art form. Joining a on stage was another renowned choreographer and the festival's creator, Saliu Sanu. This year's festival explored the themes, imaginary territories and migration. Whether we are talking about a spiritual or geographical territory, we are all born in a certain territory and we all travel in search of other territories and we leave an impact on the territories that we come across. So I thought it was important to incorporate these themes about territory and borders in this project. Stick to there. Whether we are talking about a spiritual or geographical territory, we are all born in certain territories and we will all travel in search of other territories and leave an impact on the territories that we come across. So I thought it was important to incorporate these themes about territory and borders in this project. Egypt's Muslim and Christian cultures meet in Cairo today with shops around the city offering Christmas-themed lanterns ahead of Coptic Christmas, which is celebrated on January 7. Have a look. As Egyptians welcome Coptic Christmas, gift shops are selling Christmas-themed lanterns integrating two centuries-old religious traditions. Lanterns typically flood shops and street stalls in Egypt ahead of the holy month of Ramadan, where Muslims fast from dawn to dusk. But this year marks the first time the metal or plastic mementos are used in the country for a non-Islamic celebration. Most people who come here, apart from Christians and Muslims, looking for gifts for family and friends. Many Muslims also come here to buy gifts for their Christian friends. It honestly has nothing to do with whether the person is Muslim or Christian. We are all one. Hadir adds that this is the first year the hybrid lantern are made and offered for sale in stores. The shop is offering lanterns fitted with Santa Claus and snowmen and are painted in traditional Christmas colors. Well, I guess I can still say Merry Christmas. And that's it on the program. Thanks for watching. I'm Teniola Shubawale.